Hello everyone, in this presentation I will be sharing my proposed marketing plan for Peloton. Thank you guys for joining me today and let's get started. What is Peloton? Introducing the at-home workout. Peloton is an at-home virtual and interactive cycling class. The bike is a Peloton. Peloton also offers a monthly subscription for $59 a month to participate in live classes and ride with the Peloton community. For context, I'll start with just a brief history. The founder's name is John Foley. John Foley got his first start by inventing Evite, which I'm sure we have all heard of, um, which is an online way to send out invitations. So like any entrepreneur, um, John Foley was fascinated with the new cult following of the spin cycle community. As reported in Forbes by Tucker in 2019, his curiosity was initially aroused when he noticed how many stationary bikes ended up in basements, closets, unused, while at the same time, strapped consumers were spending more time commuting, working longer hours, and lacked the time to hit the gym. And thus, Peloton came into existence. Peloton is a new generation of at-home workout equipment that provides streamable workout classes so that consumers can cycle alongside professional instructors and other users around the world. Peloton finds its greatest strength in giving users the ability to not only work out on their time, but to still experience the community aspect of spin class. This is where Peloton truly thrives in the ability to not only allow people to work out at home, but still get that same experience that they like so much in a actual physical spin class. As I'm about to touch on the target market, I first want to acknowledge what the so-called dilemma is that Peloton is trying to fix. Peloton is trying to fight the dilemma of finding a time to work fitness into a busy, busy life. Peloton aims to solve this problem by bringing the boutique fitness atmosphere along with the group fitness class camaraderie directly into the home. For the target market, we're going to start with demographics. Um, this presentation is aiming at women ages 30 to 35 located in Frisco, Texas, zip code 75034. Um, Peloton is 51% women and 49% men. Peloton does, does cost a pretty penny, so the majority of the market consists of people who are college educated, have an expendable income, and a large house. Peloton claims that they target men and women the same at this time, but women are slightly higher um, when you look at the average users. Next, we will go over the psychographics. So, the typical consumer values fitness, wellness, health, and time management, as well as family and a work-life balance. More of a type A personality. The market is described as detail-oriented and thorough. Peloton consumers will take the time to research, compare, and contrast to ensure that their money is being well spent on a quality product and a good service. Hobbies of these users are fitness and group exercise. Next, we're going to go to the geographics. So as I said previously, we will be focusing on Frisco, Texas, zip code 75034. Peloton is largely occupied by Americans, as reported by AskWonder.com, with 88.65% of traffic coming from the U.S. Most Peloton consumers live in suburban areas, houses, and vary in climate. Since the Peloton requires no commute and is directly in the home, the climate does not technically affect the target market. Um, Frisco is a suburban neighborhood. It's an affluent area, and it consists of a lot of stay-at-home moms. 
Um, though data does show that increased popularity is in colder or more unpredictable climates. Texas is a great example of this as it's very unpredictable. There's sun months where it freezes and you can't leave your house. There are months of thunderstorms and tornado warnings and then absolutely scorching summers where no one wants to go outside, especially not to ride a bike. This um, target market is really good for Peloton because Peloton is in your home, it's in air conditioning, and that's why they um, primarily are popular in areas that don't have the greatest weather year round. Next, we're going to look at the consumer needs. So the typical market will want to compare options, research the company, read reviews, and justify their spending. These consumers don't just want to have a flexible workout option, but still get, ex still get to experience the community that is generated through Spin Studios. These consumers truly don't mind spending the money that it costs to get a Peloton, but they are going to ensure that their money is being well spent. A way that um, Peloton meets these consumer needs is that they offer a virtual but also interactive community and classes with the ability to track and compare your stats, um, which is good for these type A personalities as they are typically very competitive as well. Next, we're gonna look at the business needs. So Peloton is more than a piece of equipment, it's an investment. Um, the business model requires consumers continue investing via add-ons, new accessories, and monthly subscriptions. The initial purchase of a Peloton, though it's at a high price and would make the company money, it's worthless if the user does not take advantage of the numerous other options and opportunities that come with a Peloton. Peloton is an investment. It's not just about buying or selling a bike. It is about using the bike, interacting with the bike, the community, thus taking part in add-ons, buying new equipment um, to, to add on to your current stationary bike, as well as participating in those monthly subscriptions so that you can get that community aspect. As a part of our marketing strategy, next we're gonna look at the SWOT table. Um, the SWOT table analysis will examine the plan with the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. First, we're gonna start with strengths. So Peloton strengths are the flexibility and the ease of use. Peloton is very flexible for people to use because it's in their home. It's right where they are. Um, rain or shine, whether it's hot, whether it's cold, whether, um, you know, they have child care or not, they can do it. They can do it in their home. Their kids can be in the same room. Um, or if they just have just a couple minutes, they don't have to worry about the commute to and back from a boutique fitness studio because they can just go right there in their house. And that is one of the biggest strengths of Peloton. Next, we're gonna look at the weaknesses. The biggest weakness obviously being pricing. Peloton is very, very, very expensive, um, but that is for a reason. The um, ease of use, the flexibility, that all comes at a price. Typical boutique fitness studios are also at a very high price. So this is just another way that this price um, can be justified, though it is a weakness as it's less accessible and um, it's less inclusive for all different types of markets. Another weakness that comes along with this price is that it's not just one-time price. It's not something someone could technically just save up for because there is a continuing price. If you want the full Peloton experience, you're going to have to continue paying to upgrade certain parts of your bike, to pay for a monthly subscription if you want to participate in the classes, and so on. Peloton does have a lot of opportunity with innovation. Um, there's a lot of room for growth um, for them to create different equipment. Um, like for right now, they are um, they have started introducing a treadmill. Um, so that's going to be some more fun options for people. Um, there's a lot of upgrade options. There's different price points that they're able to hit, which they have started doing recently.
And for threats, the biggest threat is going to be physical locations, actual standing boutique fitness studios with actual classes, um, you know, that are live and it's people all in a room together. That's going to be the biggest threat because it is, it is a little bit different um, than the virtual classes, though Peloton has the ability to give you that virtual community. It is different than what you get to experience when you're live and in person. And that's going to be the biggest threat to Peloton. And um, they're going to have to continue to increase the visibility of this virtual community and make it more accessible for all who own a Peloton. Next for our marketing strategy, we're going to take a look at um, four different strategies the marketing mix positioning strategy product life cycle and pricing first we're going to look at the marketing mix also sometimes known as the four p's of marketing um, there's also a fifth one which we'll touch on in a moment so the four p's of marketing are going to be price place promotion and product for peloton price the price is priced very high, ranging anywhere from $1,500 all the way up to $2,500, depending on the package or model that you decide to get. Though this price is justifiable for the experience, flexibility, and quality. This price is going to include many different um, add-ons or deciding not to get certain add-ons. It comes with certain equipment, and some come without certain equipment. Some can prepay a membership, while some do not. Next, we're going to look at place. Peloton is accessible in America and can be purchased in person or you can buy it online and have it shipped. Um, Peloton can market in stores, on social media, through advertising, and on television. Um, you can buy a Peloton in store, which makes it nice to be able to actually, you know, see one, touch one, feel one. I actually do live in Frisco, Texas myself, and somewhere called the Shops at Legacy, there is an actual Peloton store, which there are not a ton of. Um, in the country right now, but the one here um, makes it an even better area to market the Peloton towards because they can go into the store, they can interact with Peloton employees, and they can give a little test on the Peloton. Next, we're going to look at promotion. So the high cost of a Peloton bike and subscription allows the company to spend generously on marketing campaigns. Peloton can increase value by producing valuable content. Um, if something's going to be priced very high, it's going to be important that your marketing, your campaigns, all your advertising is just as high of quality as the bike. It adds to the quality. It adds to the value of the bike and it justifies the price. A big strategy that Peloton uses in promotion is that they don't mention the price. That's not something they ever mention because you're not selling the product based on the price. You're selling it based on the quality, the value, and the experience. And that is a big strength of Peloton in their promotion abilities. Next, we're going to talk about product. Peloton is priced high for the quality and experience, which I know I've said over and over again, but typical consumers will value the clean aesthetic of the Peloton and the high quality virtual classes. I know I've talked about price a lot so far and the quality and experience, but with a luxury item, that's what you're paying for. Um, you can get any stationary bike, you can do any at-home workouts, but Peloton specifically, they're selling you an experience. They're selling you a sort of status that comes with having a Peloton and taking Peloton classes. It's sort of a an exclusive community um, and it is about the value that you get in that. And lastly, I feel like this goes well onto the less talked about fifth P, which is people. People are the foundation of spin classes. People being the consumers, instructors, and Peloton employees. Um, it's not just a bike. It is a community. And in all reality, that's what Peloton is really selling at the end of the day. They're not just selling the bike. They're not just selling the classes. They're selling the people and they're selling the community. Next, we're going to talk about the positioning strategy. So 
As I kind of touched on on the last slide, stationary bikes, at-home equipment, and spin classes are not innovative or new by themselves, and this is how Peloton positions themselves to target each one of those markets. Spin classes and boutique fitness studios are typically aimed at a more affluent group, so Peloton has positioned themselves at a high price point for this reason. Peloton is for busy bodies, it's for working adults and full-time moms. Um, specific, the specific positioning strategy um, aimed at Frisco, Texas, which consists largely of stay-at-home moms who are juggling children, housework, errands, and trying to fit fitness in there somewhere. This position um, only helps increase awareness of Peloton and um, push the need for certain individuals to have a Peloton. Um, for example, a stay-at-home mom with babies is not going to have as much flexibility to get a babysitter or get childcare and head to the gym for a class. It's going to be a lot easier for them if they can just hop on whenever they have a spare moment. Peloton offers classes that range from 15 minutes all the way to an hour, which means however much time you have is how much time Peloton is going to give you. Next, we're going to go over the product life cycle. Product life cycle consists of development, introduction, growth, maturity, saturation, and lastly, decline. Currently, Peloton is in the growth stage, kind of edging towards maturity. Peloton has taken a lot of feedback already for expected improvements, changes in advertising, and more accessible price points. Peloton's always going to be expensive. They can't change this, but it is beginning to offer more than one package for each user. With this growth and feedback, Peloton is introducing other equipment, um, as example, the treadmill. When Peloton was first introduced, they had one basic model. Um, now they offer different packages, um, which range from basic to ultimate and vary in different add-ons and things that are included or you have to buy separately. Sort of tacking on to the end of the last slide, last, um, last marketing strategy we're going to be talking about right now is pricing. So pricing is exclusive in regards to Peloton. Peloton offers a basic package all the way to an ultimate, as I just said, and these offers vary between equipment, add-ons, prepaid memberships. Below is um, a screenshot of what their website is offering for bikes as of today. Um, so these are going to be some Mother's Day special prices. So I will go ahead and read the little slashed out ones that are the typical prices. So the bike basics starts at $1,495 plus delivery and setup, which is a nice feature that is included in all bikes. Again, adding to the experience of having it delivered and set up um, without without you having to do it yourself. Um, so that one's going to be just the bike. Next, we have the bike starter pack, which is normally priced at $1,720, also including the um, delivery and setup fee. So this one's going to come with shoes and um, a, just a couple pieces of extra equipment that may or may not be used in different virtual classes. Next, we're going to go to the bike select, which is typically priced at $1,825 with delivery and setup. This one's going to come with the shoes, the bike, special equipment, as well as a water bottle and um, some more apparel items. Again, adding to the brand exclusivity and um, the status that the Peloton brand and name um, comes with. Lastly, they have the bike ultimate package. This one varies between $1,935 to $2,000. $35 with delivery and setup. So this one's going to come with a lot more equipment. Um, the bike is going to have some nicer graphics on it and the equipment you get is going to be higher quality as well. As you can also see on this slide, they do um, offer some payment plan options. So this is a way that Peloton is attempting to make the product more affordable for everybody. Um, however, the typical target and the Frisco mom's market 
is not going to need the payment plan option and um, they're probably going to go all in on the bike ultimate. Next, we're going to look at the competitive analysis. So we will look at eight ways that Peloton differentiates from its competitors. So the first two differentiations are gonna be innovation and invention, which is combining at-home workouts, stationary cycling, and communal experience all into one. Next, we're gonna look at product level differentiation. Obviously, Peloton is higher quality, it presents a certain status, and it's exclusive to its users. Um, continuing on with these eight different methods of differentiation, we're going to go next to branding. So Peloton is branded for fitness individuals with busy lives, expendable income, and those who care about the brand name Peloton. Branding is a very, very important aspect of Peloton specifically. Um, Peloton has um, a certain status and a certain um, image that comes with the name Peloton, and it's something that people do pay that price for. Next, we're going to packaging, um, kind of going back to what the website had about the um, delivery and setup. That's part of the packaging. Um, though typical users have plenty of space for the equipment, they're going to desire an, an aesthetic package. So another reason for the price point is Peloton is a stunning piece of equipment with high quality materials. So the bike is sturdy. It's made of quality materials. It has um, you know, a lot of guarantee behind it, and um, also it's gonna look good in your house. Next, we're gonna go to service pre-sale and service post-sale. So the pre-sale is gonna be that initial investment of the bike. Um, that's gonna be the process of purchasing it, whether that be online or in-person, as well as the delivery and setup by um, Peloton employees. Um, the post-sale service is going to be the continuing classes, subscriptions, add-on pieces, um, also, customer support, maybe if they have any questions or repairs that they might need, that's going to be included in the post-sale service. Um, point of customer interaction. The point of interaction is not the initial purchase, but post-sale, where users participate with instructors and other riders virtually. Um, that's going to be a big difference between Peloton and and typical other products or services that you buy. It's not a one-time purchase, it's a continuing purchase, which means it's a continuing experience, which means Peloton has ample opportunity to increase consumers' um, satisfaction, to increase their experience and improve their experience along the way. Um, user convenience. Once these users get the Peloton in their home, they get it all set up, the fun begins. The flexibility is immediate and it's apparent with the ability to start spinning whenever and wherever it is convenient for you. Um, lastly, we're going to look at variety. Currently, Peloton offers different levels of stationary bikes and has recently introduced the treadmill. So in conclusion, Peloton has absolutely infiltrated the fitness and boutique gym community. Peloton has already far outgrown the capability of most other studios with the enormous potential to continue improving, innovating, and adding on to their success. The um, consistent um, and continuing interaction with its users and its consumers um, is going to improve the experience for everyone, whether they're new or they've been there for a while. Um, this constant communication, this constant interaction, it allows Peloton to continue growing and continue maturing and is going to um, lengthen that product life cycle for them. So as my references go down the screen, I just wanted to say thank you everybody for listening to my presentation. I hope you all enjoyed it very much. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, Peloton is a great brand. It's a, it's a very innovative product and it was a very interesting um, choice for me um, to, to get to study and look at how and why they're so successful.
once again, I just want to thank all of you for, for listening and watching, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I hope you learned a little bit about Peloton and also about um, some different different marketing strategies for future products or innovations that any of us might have. Have a great rest of your summer, and again, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.